Welcome back to We Were Gamers, a podcast, an OG podcast. I'm here with JJ. Hello. There's no Michael. He's off celebrating his lovely spouse's birthday. So I hope they're having fun tonight. And uh, we're here. We're going to do a pod anyway, man. Yeah, look at us. Soldier- <laughs> soldiering on without the new heart of the podcast, Michael. No chaperone. Let's get know, real. Right? <laughs> yeah, let's get real in to these homes that we own oh yeah is it the home we haven't done yeah michael's not we're technically a home he has some homeowners minutes yeah yeah it, the homeowners minute does not require you to actually own a home no it doesn't i mean it's a it's an in spirit kind of thing uh we could call yeah. it the adulting minute if we wanted really. uh, i don't I like you hate you, that word <laughs> i really don't i don't because right like because it gets co-opted by parents right yeah. or it gets co-opted by um people that really aren't adulting you know like went down to the laundromat it's like yeah okay it's not that's, that's not just, let's let's talk about stuff. you know my parents house that has serve pro at it because they had a pipe burst today that's adulting exactly you know what i mean like yeah that anyway. not trying to, not trying to gatekeep on who gets to be an adult but like look some yeah. of you kids right so get i mean get off my lawn <laughs> sure 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 yeah grand torino style right like right uh no i don't know i actually haven't seen that movie i i just know the trailer he was grouchy so now i probably put my foot in it and somebody's gonna tell me there's like some racial overtones in that movie. oh so. okay i'm gonna back off <laughs> anyway, that one then. it's a good movie though people should see it okay i don't mean anything racially charged by that okay we're moving on um all right responsibility minute yeah. <laughs> what what were you responsible for? Hey, I have a, a mango tree. That sounds delicious. Uh, it will be in three to five years. Oh, okay. <laughs> that kind of a tree. It's growing real fast. I need to actually... Um, my friend, my Katie's friend, who has become our friend uh, from her work, is a... I would, he's a definitely California-renowned, but maybe also a world-renowned mango grower. Oh, he has like a couple acres of mango trees. Oh wow, serious? Yeah, yeah. So he's like going to teach us how to graft and stuff like that, um, so that we can have all sorts of mangoes growing on one tree. Should we start by growing the tree and then worrying about grafting onto you, it later? You, you're you are ready for the responsibility minute. You already know the <laughs> undertone of this story. <laughs> I just am bad at growing things, so I know that. I can't do it very well. Yeah. So I leave it to other people. Props to your house. We've only tried to grow a few items of food this year, one of which was tomatoes, which came out fine because tomato plants do their thing. Yeah. You just put water on them. But this other thing that has been our baby is a mango tree. And um, while it has grown taller, it has recently become sickly with something called powdery mildew. That sounds bad. Yeah, it required me to, in the hottest months of the year with the longest amount of sun, wait until the sun was gone to pick mm-hmm. leaves and spray it with materials to get rid of this thing to make it a healthy tree again. I don't understand, and I props to your whole household for keeping a garden growing because... Again, don't really look at me here <laughs> if more my wife's doing, um, but, you know, it is... We grew some unbelievably sized squashes uh, this year. So, yeah, I, I, we we grilled squash the other day, and I think each one was about the size of the keyboard. Wow. <laughs> like it was so big. Awesome. Awesome. Well, the tree is back on the mend, but, uh, you know. That's good. It was saved. That's what's it, important. It, it is salvaged and restaked. With It has gotten quite top-heavy, and we started finally getting some wind up here. I don't know uh, if the humidity, humid, humidity has dropped for you as well, but it uh, has been super hot most of the time hot, down yes. here. Yes, but there was humidity last week, and it's not as bad as it yeah, used to be. Yeah. So yeah. at least doing outdoor work has somewhat improved. Uh, indoor work in the garage, however, is still nine million degrees. JJ, my garage yep. door fell apart. Oh, no, that's a thing you need to Not, get your cars in and out. Yeah, um, well, come on, let's be real. Uh, I, <laughs> no, yeah. there are no cars right. in that garage. Um, yeah. Not the one that we previously talked about in the Homeowner's Minute that blew off in the strong Santa Ana winds. Uh, this was the roll-up. I see. Yeah. 
and it just like decided to stop rolling up well or so, it fell down e- e- yeah when we moved in here it was in perfect condition when we purchased the home it was in perfect condition and between purchasing the home and coming back to the home after the people had moved out someone had done a number backing into it Mm. Uh, which I did my best to pound out, however, caused the door to roll with a stuttering gait, let's say. Mm. Possibly uh. the track was a little I think the track bad. is okay, but the door is definitely warped in areas and I can't get it straight. Um, which just caused the bolts to loosen without my knowledge because they mm. weren't bolts. They're like machine screws that they just assumed would hold in because if the door was correctly aligned, it wouldn't be a problem. Right. Uh, There's like weird stress going on in places mm-hmm, that aren't mm-hmm. meant to have it. Yeah, definitely. So yesterday I was able to put my hand through my garage door. Mm. In That's spaces. not really how it's supposed mm, to work. No, no, it wasn't. So that was Bummer. a fun experiment trying to get the thing back together without buying a new one. Did we succeed in the end or is it just like halfway? It's functioning in a currently closed capacity. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> the garage is currently closed. That's what's needed. Success. Yeah. Man. Move. It's just an endless stream of things you need to replace. Speaking of replacing things, oh, that no. leads into my homeowner's minute, uh, which really isn't necessarily about my home, but one of those things you still need to have every day, which is the car that I drive. Well, to and from your home. Yeah. So, and you need it. Uh, I mean, you know, yours to to is in and, your garage at times. So, like, it is. in full... You would think that would help it, but surprisingly, no, because well, uh, there was a recall. Oh, well. So I, I had to go take it back because, hey, the manufacturer of the airbags that are in my car. Oh, Takata or whatever they are. Yeah, yeah. It went out of business. So they're mm-hmm. like, hey, you need to come get different ones of these. Mm-hmm. It won't take long. Don't worry. Uh, I take it in. They're like, oh, you know, there's a, there are, these aren't mandatory recalls, but they are safety notices and we will do them for you for free because we are required to by law Uh but we are not required to notify you about them oh interesting yes I thought that was very interesting Uh, some of which involve uh, certain bolts in the variable valve timing system and uh, something uh, I forget where the other thing was it was also in the variable valve timing system but anyway uh And they're like, and if we open this and we see that certain things have happened in there, we then have to, like, disassemble it completely and rebuild it all. Of course, it won't cost you anything, but only if that happens. It does not always happen. You got a loaner, right? Of course, yeah. uh, I will say this nice thing about BMW is that they definitely, every time I've taken the car to the dealership for any kind of thing, they are like, here's a loaner car. What kind would you like? So uh, they asked me that question again and gave me a, like, base model 3 Series to drive, so I'm able to get to and from work. You know, you can start to use that for shopping for for your next vehicle. Yeah. I don't want to drive a base model 3 Series. That's what I can tell you. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not very happy with this one. But for the cost of no dollars, uh, I can't complain too much. This one, meaning it's still in your possession. Oh, yes, I still have it. Oh, uh, no. I took this car in on Friday. It was supposed to be back to me either late that day or maybe the oh, next day. Oh, no. But, Andrew, I received a call on Friday that said, you know, we will call you Monday. There is some stuff that we need to do. We saw some bolts that had sheared off. This is bad. I had to go find all the pieces and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, but we, we have the parts in. It'll be no problem. Is this related to your car giving you problems before? And they were kind of like, oh, I don't know. You know, uh, that issue was the same system so maybe hmm um yeah years ago i had that issue uh where it lost power while i was on the freeway yeah uh, and it was the same system at fault here suspect so right mm-hmm. uh and so they called me back uh so they're like yeah so we'll need to keep it until monday but we'll call you then and everything should be good I'm like, okay great they call me today so we did disassemble it, and we found that the thing that only happens sometimes, quote unquote, uh, happened to you. So we now have to, you know, do a rebuild of this this piece. So uh, and we have to order parts now when we didn't have to before. All of a sudden, that's very suspect. Uh, and now that's going to be Wednesday, uh, which is a bummer. 
And then, of course, they always try to upsell you on here's other things wrong with your car that we can very helpfully fix for a million dollars or whatever. Your brakes are six-tenths of the way down. Don't you want new ones? Surprisingly, they didn't say that. Uh And I actually expected them to be like, oh, your brake pads seem a little worn out, uh, which I knew was going to be a lie because I had replaced them not long ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, And they're like, oh, I'm sure your cabin air filter is bad or something dumb. Let me tell you about Uh, cabin air filters. Go buy one for $10. I know. Well, the problem is changing them is very difficult. Yours might just be in your glove box, honestly. uh, I believe it is in a very hard to reach place near the firewall. Oh, interesting. uh, In in the engine side, so it's yeah. BMW. No one ever accuses BMW of building cars that are easy to service. Sure. Uh, Anyway, uh, so they're like, you know, okay. I'm like, no, 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 none of this stuff. How about we fix the thing that was free and that you promised to do? Uh, and they're like, yes, of course, whatever. So now it's Wednesday. Uh, I'm crossing my fingers that nothing is going to go wrong in their rebuild of this system inside the engine. Um, so we'll see. They claim, uh, that this was the reason why there was oil leaking from my car. Um, which is kind of confusing to me. I'm not exactly sure why oil would have been in that part of the system, but what do I know? bad gasket something sheared and and nicked a gasket or something yeah i'm not uh i'm not i know stuff about cars but not enough to like tell you which part of the engine is the part that has oil or not or whatever so i I mean i don't know man the cars seem i don't understand this they get more complicated as time goes on i understand that i mean you know there's at least nine computers in my car right exactly um But there certain seems to be in every car a problem part, and I'm very sad that it seems to be that uh, in the future I'm going to have oil leaking from our car because we've already gone through two oil pans in Ooh, three years. That's bad. No, they're I mean they're under warranty, but like, man. Yeah, but like if in three years you've already had two, as soon yeah. as it's not under warranty, I know. I'm thinking about that extended warranty. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be spicy, man. Yeah. Oh, the replacement minute. Man. Yeah, bummer. Mm-hmm. Well, I hope you get your car back. Me too. Um, you know, I want it to be good again, hopefully. It's too so. bad that they're so fun to drive, considering how much maintenance sometimes I is know. required of them. That is the biggest bummer, truly. Um, but, you know, we're, we're doing okay over here, so that's nice. not... Uh, Luckily, nothing, you know, life-changingly bad is happening. So. <laughs> the homeowner's minute seems to always be something that went wrong, and then it's most of the time got fixed. Yeah, eventually. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, you know what didn't go wrong for me this year? And we covered it last episode, but I just want to see if you had any more thoughts. Comic-Con. I, yeah. I listened, as I always do when I edit the episode, and I thought to myself, you know... More than any year in the last five, I enjoyed myself this year, even despite my complaints about how far away we had to stay in the hotels. If we got mm-hmm. a good hotel next year and things go the same way they went this year, I am I think I'm aces on Comic-Con for a little bit longer. Yeah, I was very happy with how everything turned out this year. I think, honestly, like even the the having to commute with the trolley and stuff ended up being not that big a deal. Uh, there was a lot more fun stuff it felt like that was doable this year as opposed to other years i don't know if that's just like me feeling like that because i got access to some stuff that i normally don't or if it just was the like it actually was the case um but i firmly believe it was the case feeling yeah does that go away you think next year if all the big stuff comes back if there's a marvel panel if there's hbo panels that kind of stuff Uh, you know game of thrones will be back next year um I was surprised well, I didn't see a Westworld thing this year, considering... Will Game of Thrones have aired already? Well, they've got two more seasons left in them, right? They're oh, shooting right. it all I at forget. once. I forget they're splitting that thing into, like, two half seasons or right. whatever. Right, yeah, it's going to be two, two eight episodes or something like that. Right, yeah, okay. You're right, and then that will definitely mean they will be there. There is a possibility there will be... Not just... This, well, we could do this. We could talk about Star Trek for a second. There was a possibility there will be... A lot more Star Trek there next year. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff in development, right? Like yeah. Like shows that are supposedly happening. Two but... movies and possibly three total shows. I guess Discovery is yeah. going pretty well. We need to watch that. Especially we considering do. apparently Spock is going to be in it. 
Yeah, I saw that announcement, and I was like, well, I guess this means I'm going to have to watch it sooner or later now. Yep. I saw some renderings of the Enterprise from the trailer, and they did a little bit of work on it to make it look new, right? Like, mm-hmm. to make it fall into line. Right. Um, But it definitely looks like the cur- the Prime Universe Enterprise. Like, you look at it, and you're like, that's definitely not a J.J. Abrams Enterprise. They didn't They didn't monkey with it too much. They just made it look... It's like they took the uh, NX-01 and the uh, and the other couple ships, more recent ships, and they've, like, m- you know, updated it. They they washed the new brush over it to make it look new. Yeah, it got, you know, it got really panels. really changing the structure or whatever. It's got, it got panels. It, it's more metal than, than just gray. You know what I mean? Sure, yeah. It doesn't look like a bunch of tubes with You're right. toothpicks right, or whatever. Right, right. Like exactly. Detailed stuff. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I... We... We'll, we will get around to watching that sooner than later, probably. I hope so. Um, yeah. So I think that, I mean, I went left Comic-Con last year and was a little bit bummed about it and then went into BlizzCon still with the bad taste of conventions in my mouth from that. And I think it affected my BlizzCon. And this mm. year... I am looking forward to trying Comic-Con again one more year and giving it that chance of, and then also much more excited about BlizzCon. Yeah, I am looking forward to BlizzCon again this year. We will see um, what they have to show. It feels like this might be a year where something new pops up, but I guess we said that last year too, so who knows. Um, but yeah, I, I like I said, you know, Comic-Con worked out real great this year yeah. despite the all the bad signs going in um so yeah like i said it was a it was a great time in the end and yeah i hope blizzcon is too it usually has been well i guess we could just i did you watch since we're talking about blizzcon did you watch the overwatch finals uh i saw like some clips and stuff i did not actually spend much time watching it uh i saw some of the memes uh from the <laughs> Uh, poorly received DJ Khaled performance. Oh, poor guy. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, maybe a mismatch in the audience there or something. I'm not sure. Yeah, they've done exactly that a few what. times. Um, thinking back to, well, Blink should have not been a mismatch, but it was definitely because of their attitude of mismatch. Yeah, I think that that was more the band not being happy about being there yeah. rather than the audience not liking the band. Yeah. Oh, well. I enjoyed that show for what it was worth. It was okay. They played songs. And that was what I wanted. <laughs> Fair enough. The I game can't say around. it was the best concert I've been to. I definitely have fallen off of watching Overwatch games a little bit. Um, at the beginning of the season, I actually flipped a coin kind of between um, the LA Gladiators and the London Spitfire by letting whoever won the first series against each other decide and London won. So I was kind of happy about that since I ended up rooting for them all season but yeah. they didn't do great much of the year and so i had kind of fallen off of watching games but then i watched the finals obviously mm-hmm. uh because they also were in on the it's coming home memes yep um and it did yeah that was fun and the games were pretty good despite the kind of one-sided ending yeah I, you know i i just find that sh- that game as an esport to be tough to watch i, I think I still agree if with you, all the you, original points we've made. They didn't improve any of it for the finals. Yeah. If you are not deep in Overwatch, it makes it tough. Uh, I did uh, log into Overwatch briefly to claim some free loot boxes uh, of the new hero, the hamster. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Wrecking Ball. Uh, yeah, and I played him in practice for about five minutes and was like, this is cool for someone who's good at this game, but not me. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind this of interesting very- that they're making advanced heroes kind of a little bit yeah Yeah. the like swinging around from a tether point thing is like very cool but also like not something i think i will be able to get my mind around in any short period of time i'm just even any long period of time absolutely certain that there will be a super monkey ball version of the game in the custom games at some point yes Mm -hmm. that's what i'm looking for super monkey ball is great super monkey ball is you are right you are right. It's hard. That game is hard. Which makes, if people want to see something that's really great, you need to go watch speed runs of Super Monkey Ball from AG or SGDQ. Where they jump Holy off the sides. 
they just like have precision jumps where they're just like and you roll off the edge at this speed in this area and then you like bam right in the goal mm-hmm. you just like fall past a hundred mile level and land right at the exit yeah and you're like I, yeah he's it, one pixel from falling off the side the whole time because that's the fastest place to be something yep. like that Ugh. yeah super Disgusting. impressive yeah so go check those out if you want to see people going fast yeah for real it's like sonic but better Yes. Although I heard that new Sonic Mania game is pretty good. Uh, Yeah, I think it's probably a game that if you liked old Sonic, this is a good Sonic game. Cool. Cool. I did try a new game. Well, it's not a new game. I don't know. It's kind of new. Uh, I assume you know what I'm talking about. I have a good guess. <laughs> I think that this is not going to be the only time we talk about this because, uh, JJ, you just sent us magic codes. Yeah, uh, the Magic the Gathering Arena yeah. closed beta proceeds. So we should uh, we should preface this a little bit because we missed telling one story about Comic Con, and that was mm. that I ended up with many starter packs of Magic cards. <laughs> yeah, we had the intention of shuffling them together and playing a silly game, and then that never happened. No, which is maybe my one regret. I. It was hard. It was really yeah. hard because when you're at the con, you're not going to stop to play Magic. And there's no space. There's, yeah. Well, I'm not going to stop to play Magic uh, yeah. during live convention hours. And so then it was kind of down to, well, meeting up after and then meeting up after with the whole trolley and then going out to dinners. And it just it was never meant to be. But we did yeah. talk to them quite a bit about Arena because I was curious about it since you'd been talking about it on the pod a little bit. And um, it got me intrigued, and then they magically sent you codes to let us into it. Yeah, they had been promising to send everyone who is currently in the code, the closed beta, a grip of codes, that are like five or something, to everyone so that you could invite your friends to play, and they were going to do a big server stress test thing, uh, which happened, and the servers were completely annihilated, um, as is expected. <laughs> yeah. Um. But I didn't use all my codes at that point, so I still had some uh, for you guys. And have you gotten through and done the new player experience stuff and are just playing some Magic? So there was a few intro games there, which were nice for telling me how to do the things I remembered to do in Magic. You got uh, to tap, and you got to yeah, yeah, but like also which one's the power. Yeah, and... how the game automatically does some of the stuff. If you just throw a card out, you know, it'll it'll tap for you, but you have to kind of make sure you tap if you want to just play cards in specific orders as a person who has played magic you should know uh the auto tapping is not good i've many times discovered this if you have a land that can do more than one thing besides just making mana uh the game will be like oh well what if you want to do that other thing i should save this one when it sometimes is extremely non-optimal to do that so yeah be aware of that stuff um, I think your quote when you told us, when you gave us the codes is definitely a quote I would use having played it. Um, it's a beta, it's a beta beta. It's like a real beta. It's not yeah. a, it's not a blizzard beta. It's not a full game right. that's ready to go and just needs tuning. Like, yeah, there are blizzard definitely has a notorious habit of releasing betas that are as good or better than full products. This is not that. It, it is a, you can see a full product there, Yeah, but it is missing crucial, important features as far as I'm concerned. Oh, and there are definite things that are confusing as well. I'm very curious next week to talk. I mean, you and I are going to probably gab about magic here, like actual magic for a minute. Yeah. I'm very curious to see how Michael did, because there are things in there that even I got tripped up by, which was like when I went to block with creatures and then their creature still pointed arrows at other creatures of mine that were not blocking. Yep, or it's not great. Yeah, or the auto tapping then preventing you from playing other cards because you mm-hmm. could you the, the game doesn't tell you you can tap lands on your own. Yeah, um, it also doesn't expose to you that there's like a key you can hit to enter like total control, disable all automatic stuff mm, as well. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of UI stuff that is just not great. Uh, the collection manager. Yeah, the collection manager is hot trash, actually. Ooh. It is bad. Yeah. And the sets. So this is this is probably where we're going to get into magic magic, but the sets make Let's no go. sense. It's yeah. Magic 19 is just launched. Or right, is that launching is the new, in the real world. The new core set Magic 
2019. Right. Yeah. So that should be the base, right? That is the newest set that is out. And they just threw in a bunch of other sets that they don't tell you anything about, and you have a bunch of those cards randomly from those sets in your collection. So those sets are in there in release order um, from when they were released. There was They were not released into the game at the same time. They didn't start with the earliest one, but the earliest one in there is Kaladesh or Kaladash. So old. Right. Uh, and then Aether Revolt, also old. Then Ixalan, uh, which is the start of a new block there. Uh, and then Rivals of Ixalan. Oh, wait, no, I skipped one. Sorry. Uh, before Ixalan is... Uh, Amon Ket, it's the one with the little pyramid. Then there's Hour of Destruction or something like that, H.O. something. Uh, then Ixalan, then Rivals of Ixalan, then Dominaria, and then Magic 2019. So they don't tell new players. They, it obviously, is an account wipe, so it doesn't really matter what's going on. Um, right. But they don't tell new players, don't buy cards, you know, like when the, when the account wipes stop, don't buy cards from the old sets. But they want you to buy cards for the old sets. I know, but so. there's no way for an old, uh, another player to know like what's rotating and all that stuff that's not in there. Yeah, and the game currently, uh, you know, they talk about oh, we have plans to support more formats. Which, by the way, the game already has too many formats. Oh yeah, I and think. it's completely confusing because like well, I go to the play tab and I'm like, what are all these formats? I have no idea that I should be just be clicking free play because all the o other formats cost gems. Gems or gold. Or gold. Uh, uh, there are some that are gem only, but a lot of them you can enter with both. Right. And, oh, by the way, you should probably pay for the, the gold format ones because then you get cards. Some of them. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I can break some of these down for you because they're kind of like two classes of them, right? Right. There are, there's the, uh, the free play style, which is just their like, hey, regular ladder with a rank and whatever constructed decks. Uh, and then there's competitive uh, constructed and competitive versions of all these things. Competitive basically just means it's best of three. Oh, right. Okay. W which is a big deal because a lot of Magic players hate the fact that you can take a deck that's cheesy and wins with like yeah. a condition that you can't know about. Tons of OTKs, a lot of right? ways, A lot of ways to do that in Magic. Just out of nowhere, just lose the game to a combo or something you didn't see coming. Um and then in a best of three, you can go, okay, this is what their deck actually does. Sideboard in a bunch of cards that, because Magic has sideboards, like, you know, uh, sideboard in a bunch of cards that, like, stop that kind of stuff. Uh, and then basically hose them the next two games. Uh, and without that in the free play ladder, it kind of leads to certain kinds of decks being popular versus other ones that maybe really should be strong. Um, so people were very happy when they added competitive versions a lot of a lot of the things. So like there's draft, there's like quick draft, which is like, hey, I'm going to draft some cards, you know, in Magic style where you open a booster and pick a card and it goes on. Um, but then there's competitive draft where it's like not only do you draft, but the draft games are now best of three with your sideboards. Right. So people are happy about that, but then it dilutes the pool quite a bit where you're now like okay, well, I want to play just regular free play. How many people are in this are in this ladder versus how many are in the competitive play right. versus how many are in the regular quick draft versus in the competitive quick draft and yada, yada, yada. So I don't know. Um, and then they just recently inter they've introduced some event type things. There's one go on, going on currently called Brewer's Delight, oh, okay. which uh, has a very low entry fee in gold only, no gems, so no paid currency. Uh, and you win... Uh, it's like three wins or two losses, whichever comes first, and your prizes are a set of cards. So, like, specific cards. There's a list on their website. Not in the client, though, so you would never know <laughs> unless you were looking on the website. Uh -huh. Again, more problems. Right. Uh, that are supposed to be fun for, like, making silly decks. There's, like, a bunch of cat cards for cat tribal decks, and there's some other ones for certain other kinds of uh, fun brewing decks, I guess. Hmm. Um, which is all well and good, but again, you would have no idea what that is if you just look at the client and see Brewer's Delight, what is this? Or how to build them, right? Like, if you're a new yeah. player, you're going to get all these cards and then do what with them? Well, like, if you could even win a game, because there's no limits on what kind of deck you play in there, so everyone is just playing the regular meta decks. Yeah. So, I don't know. It, it has issues for sure. And the collection manager, the lack of a friends list, and they're like, 
weird mode stuff are i think the three biggest ones definitely uh, another one i've noticed is that the ladder is or the free play ladder anyway is just like games based it's experience you know i was beginner now i'm bronze yeah it's just kind of like, like slowly however many games you play uh, it does go down when you lose at at a certain point because I used to be higher than I am. Oh, okay. Good to know. Uh, I, sw- I switched to a different deck, and it has not been doing great. Oh. So, um, eh, I don't know. It's fun, though. So, The thing I did, uh, I, I played a lot. So I, I don't mean to sound like I'm complaining, but initial impressions of, of a client having come from Gwent and from Hearthstone with, with pretty tuned clients right the clients are are very good despite the fact that gwent is i think technically still in beta yep and uh Uh, and gwent's collection manager also has issues yeah it does but it's better it's definitely better than this one yeah Yeah. um now they don't have as many cards and they don't have the like four of everything and you know um yeah that's just the initial impressions and and they need improvement but I did play quite a bit because turns out I enjoyed magic back in the day and I still enjoy magic. <laughs> yeah, I think that has been the most the the most reason that I have kept playing. And you know, they they do the daily quest thing just like Hearthstone yeah. does. And they're pretty generous uh, with it actually. I want to talk yeah. about that after we're done with this because I read some articles that were not qu- kind to the currency and reward system and I want to refute those things. So they've definitely been doing some work on the way the rewards work and how you earn the wild cards, which are the um, the the things you get to trade in for any card you want. They don't have a dusting system like Hearthstone does. Uh, and that stuff has been changing. The cost to enter events seems to be set pretty much, but then some of these new events come along and the costs are different, so it's hard to know. Um, it is... Uh, the the thing I will say about the economy, quote unquote, uh, is that you know people have been saying that like really this wild card stuff is a cool idea, but really in practice, the dust system of Hearthstone is just better. Um, I don't have a response to that. So I don't know why it's better though, because this doesn't create it, the economy of cards is different. Yeah, there are hugely less cards. In Hearthstone. It, totally. There are massive amounts of cards in Magic. The, yeah. The thing that people want to do, and I'm kind of glad they can't, and this is from a beginner's perspective, is they want to dust everything else they own and make one deck. The game kind of requires you to do that anyway, though, if you want to win a lot, because there's really no other way to use your wild cards effectively. Until you start getting a lot more cards or winning a lot more. Right. So, you know, kind of early on, you are forced to just make one deck and you have no way to do it. And th- and then, you know, after you play a little while longer, you start to see the thing that is weird. And I actually, like, don't know why they haven't figured out some kind of conversion or whatever. But, like, uh, you your rare wild cards, the yellow ones are the most precious resource in the game. Not the mythic ones, which technically should be harder to get and more rare. It's harder to get them, but you don't need as many of them as you do the rare ones. The rare ones you use all the time. The uncommon ones, you will have stacks, and the common ones may as well be paper. They're free. You have tons and tons and tons. And then there's nothing to do with those. It's like you can craft all of the four copies you need of every good common and uncommon in every set, no problem uh, without paying a single penny <laughs> after a while. Uh, and then you're going to be like, well, what do I do with all these common and uncommon wild cards? I guess I'm just going to build weird decks or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Or maybe uh, they should let you color them up. Yeah. So that's definitely what people have been asking for. Um, you know, even if you don't do it in the way that like is generous to the player or whatever, if it's like, you know, 20 to one, 10 to one, something. Right. Uh, you know, there needs to be a way to go up because like, there are screenshots of people out there with like 50 uncommon and 300 common wild cards and zero mythics and zero rares. I see the issue there. And if they could color them up, that would help a lot. But I think that people are shortchanging the fact that you get a set amount of these and you can get them out of packs. So like, I didn't realize that 
that every pack that I opened, I was getting a counter towards getting more cards yeah. without so having to counter, get rid of my oh. extra cards, right? Like, I don't have to dust them. Right. So that counter is actually new in this most recent ah, patch. Ah, see? It used to work that way. Oh, okay. Um, but it was never exposed, and it was kind of like a like a magical pity counter mm-hmm. behind the scenes that you couldn't see. And then in the rare wild card or whatever would just appear in your pack, which is fine. I mean, getting a rare wild card in a ba- in a pack is better than getting a specific rare, right? Right, sure. Because it's anything instead of nothing. But the difference is now you get them in addition to the one that might be right, in the pack. Right, exactly. So this is like getting dust in your pack plus every 10 packs that you get, you get more dust, right? Yeah. I don't know. And it seems like a good system. It's better. So they have improved it from where they started. Uh, I, I think just in the end, people really want to be able to have full control, right, in a digital game. If I go, hey, I don't want these, like, you know, the, people in Magic, like, talk about selling their bad cards, right? Because it's a thing that people do in Magic, right? You take your collection of uncommons or whatever that no one wants and sell them to people at your local game store or whatever mm-hmm. for, you know, 10 cents a card or 50 cents for the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> um you know, but that's like something that people do, right? Ill here, there's no way to do that, and so you're just left with four copies of every awful, unplayable card in every set. Well, it's interesting because like we came only good for drafting, right? Yeah, and it's good. It's just, it's interesting because we came from Hearthstone more. Well, we came from Magic and Warlord and all those other things, right? But digital card right. game was, we didn't experiment with Magic: The Gathering online at all. So Magic is creating a modern card game. These are the way that, you know, these systems work now, even in uh, not just card games, but gotcha games and all the kind of ideas behind free-to-play games. And they're now having to fight 30 years of Magic. Yeah. Per, you know, like these guys have been it, playing Paper Magic and then and they're like Magic not Online when they can it. trade. Right. And, and, like, I think the complaint is that they're not doing it all the way in either direction, right? They're not they're not doing the thing where you have a complete, you know, quote, paper set online that you can trade with other people or whatever. Mm-hmm. So you can't do that. You also can't, like, turn your digital cards into digital dust and make whatever other kinds of digital cards you want. So they're, like, sitting somewhere in the middle and kind of no one is happy. Hmm. Um, Maybe that's the best way to be. I don't know. Yeah, who knows? You know, um, it, it's really hard to say. And I will say something that they do that I really like. Uh, and as you play and complete quests and stuff, they give you more decks. Yeah, and that did that add cards to my collection? It's supposed to. Yeah. Okay. Because I I thought it did, and I definitely just got a red green deck, and I was like, oh, I think I just got a a whole deck of sixty cards just for playing five games. That's cool. Uh, and, you know, those those decks are usually, you know, the pre-constructed decks are not generally tuned very well and whatever. But, you know, that's 60 cards you probably didn't have all of anyway. You may have had some. I know there are mon- many, 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 many more cards to obtain. But right. I don't think people realize, like, I got in doing almost no work over two days this weekend when I played a ton. I got five or six packs of cards. Can you imagine how much grinding that would take with Hearthstone? Yeah, the game actually, in terms of their, if you play a lot and win a lot, you can get the, the like daily rewards or whatever that are allowed. There's a decent amount of packs in there. I think you can get up to three packs a day plus extra gold, um, plus however much gold your daily quest is worth. Um, you know, you can definitely get mm, like several packs worth of gold in a day if you really play it a lot. I think it's up to 15 wins the individual extra rewards right. go out. It was definitely so, it was definitely felt nicer to a casual in terms of rewarding me. Yeah, and it's you know that you know eventually that third set of quests with the little magic symbol underneath it will run out. You'll get all the dual color decks or whatever and then that will be the end of that. But I mean, while you're getting there as a new player, they give you a bunch of cards. And that's good. Like, it, and it helps to let you see, like, okay, you know, you start off with all these monocolor decks, right? Oh, just red, just blue, just white, just green, just black, and whatever. And this is where I'm curious to hear from Michael, because he's never played Magic before, and he's going to step in and, and play, oh, okay, so there's these different colors, and I play those decks. And I don't and, think he's going to know until he plays that battle against the dragon that you can, like, mix decks. Yeah. 
and they're you know and a, a very large portion of magic is like figuring out what stuff works together how you can blend stuff and do different things use red very... spells to beef up very um sticky green creatures uh but you know that's the kind of a thing that uh if you have not played magic before you don't like you and I, I think, Andrew, instinctively think of these kinds of things because we played a bunch when we were kids. And this is how the game kind of works. Green is about big creatures and buffing them up all the time, and red is about dealing damage, and black is about sacrificing stuff and getting cool effects, and white is about healing and that kind of stuff. But we know that because we played a bunch of magic, not because like something about the color green tells you. Oh, and not even the tutorial, really. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see. And then you start playing these dual color decks. You're like, oh, I can do this thing and then use this thing at the same time. This guy has haste. This other thing buffs that guy up. And then I have this huge haste guy that comes out of nowhere and, you know, all this kind of stuff. So it's a it's a good system and a smart system for people that haven't played Magic before. The problem is maybe they're like, you know, signing and introduction and the collection manager aspect of how this stuff works is maybe a little opaque. I just forgot how much I like the mechanics of a magic game. and Yeah, it, it feels good to play. Once you kind of like lean into more of it being a tabletop simulator, because I was pretty annoyed initially at like every step of how the way. How long everything the takes. The games take a long time because every step, if I have a card, I could play the game weights at every single different little step for me to decide if I want to play it or not. I can't tell it. I don't want to play this card this turn at all. I don't care what he does. Yeah. It it tries to give you the ability to take the priority to do whatever weird interrupt action you have. Uh, or interrupt isn't the word anymore. What is it? Instant or whatever. Right. Anyway. Yeah. But like, yeah. I wish I could say, no, I'm not playing this this turn ever. Right. And, and, you know, there's a little button that says end turn toggle that you can flip. But even then it still asks you, oh, do you want to declare block or something? No, no. Just kill me. It's fine. Um. You know, and that gets especially painful if you're playing against a person who's doing a combo deck and then you get prompted to do something in between every step of every single one of their combos. Right. Um, or if you're trying to play a combo deck yourself, it gets very maddening. If you're, I need to execute 600 actions this turn. Okay, please let me just click on all these buttons. Let's go. Come on. Um, but, you know, the, it is a... The game is a lot more interactive and there's a lot more interaction in a game of magic than there is in hearthstone and getting back to that is kind of is pretty fun i, I think. definitely even in the games that i was losing hard against the deck because i was playing against beginner decks also right uh, people that had the same basic allotment of cards as me but i had gone through the the collection manager already and tweaked my decks i felt it felt good right it felt like Oh, uh, you know, I've got a little experience on these people. You know, one or two of them got got my goat with a combo I didn't know about, or or whatever. Mm -hmm. But like the games are slow, and they don't rely on like, oh, well, I didn't draw my one, my two, my three, my four, and my five, and my six, and my seven, and my eight in the right order. Yeah, there is definitely an aspect though. You know, it's like, oh, I just drew like four lands in a row. I think I just lost this right, game. Right, sure. I mean, that happens, right? Um, I didn't draw any land but, for yeah. three turns. Okay. Yep, game over. Um, and that sucks. But you know, there, then there are also ways where it's like, well, I'm now going to do this combo and put my whole deck into my hand, <laughs> and then let's just do this other thing mm -hmm. um, where I play 800 cards and actions this turn and hit, deal 70,000 damage to you. Yeah. So, you know, it, I enjoy it for what it is. And what it is is simulating a, a weird, crazy game of magic online. Without having the weight, I think, of the magic online community on it. Yeah, it it definitely has. It, it is a uh, it is a better looking system, an easier playing system for people that are kind of new. Uh just for people who want to play like a game of magic. I think it will be a lot more fun once they introduce the ability to play against friends and stuff. Oh my goodness. Yes. When because... I can then like go, okay, Andrew, I built a stupid knights deck. Let's play like knights only or like dumb, like here's a deck I made up yesterday. Magic. That That is the magic that I want to play. That is the magic that makes me, when I've got those starter decks at Comic-Con, think that like, 
maybe, maybe just maybe I could find one day a month to go to a comic or to a local game store and play magic. And I'm like, I'm never right. going to do that. But like, if I could text once a month to JJ, like, Hey man, let's jump on and play like an hour's worth of magic. Yeah. There's no like, what's the meta? What's this? What's that? Because who cares? I'm going to play this dumb white, you know, token deck. Yeah. That's what I want to play. And in magic, a lot of the time, unlike Hearthstone, sometimes that, that little token sapperling deck can just steamroll. Yep. It, you know, if you, if you get your combo going or whatever the engine of that deck is, sometimes it could just run away, especially because like the meta decks are, are, are tuned to such a degree that they expect to win against certain other types of decks and play against certain other types of decks. And sometimes the weird thing you just built on the side does not fit into that archetype at all. And there's so much more to build because there are so many more cards in magic than Hearthstone. Yeah. And it is a massive, massive amount of cards. And it's like, it's so massive that you just can't even attempt to learn what all of them do. Don't even try. No, Yeah. This is why the collection manager needs improvement because I would love to sit there and sift through green cards for an hour. I would love that. Yeah, the, but the way the system works now, it's like click three more cards, click three more cards. You know, it's like come on. Yeah, and like you could even get to a point where you're like, okay, I know Green had this tribe in this set. I want to see that. You can't sort by set. Yeah. What are they doing? Yeah, and like I can't sort by set. That's like one of the most basic things that there is about a card. What set is it from? Yeah. So you know, it, they're they know. I'm sure. Um, Hopefully they get there. <laughs> well, I've mostly been playing that, but um, I assume you haven't. I assume you've kind of like gotten past the hump that I was on where it was like, oh my God, I'm playing magic again and that you're trying something else. Yeah, uh, I jumped into a little bit of a game that is currently early access, but it's leaving pretty soon called Dead Cells. Oh. Um, it is a Metroidvania kind of game, but also a roguelike. Metroidvania. Um, so... You get one run, but as a Metroidvania. Yeah, there's a branching paths and stuff, but then, you know, you unlock certain kinds of upgrades and stuff that then let you traverse to other branches, perhaps, on the next run. Uh, So there's some permanence in terms of what happens. Um, You know, you can unlock new kinds of weapons and stuff to be available for the runs. Cool. Um, All the different swords. Uh, It's a kind of like a dungeon-y crawling aspect Mm -hmm. uh you collect cells uh these little orbs and then you turn them in at the end to do stuff uh unlock weapons or you know increase the amount of times you can use your health flask whatever kind of a dark soulsian uh health system in that you have an hp bar but you have a little flask you can drink from (laughs) a certain number of times uh Uh, and then when it's gone it's gone Uh uh you could refill it between levels but you know you got to get there first Mm -hmm. um It's been really fun. All the weapons are really cool. There's a whole bunch of real weird stuff in there that has been pretty fun. Cool. Um, I have been liking the uh, assassin daggers that just attack really fast and do critical hits from behind. But there's like bows and shields and whips, all kinds of weird whips. There's an electric whip. There's a fire whip. There's grenades that you could toss, like giant bear traps you throw on the ground. The enemies walk into them and get stuck. And yeah, a uh, little like traps that shoot arrows and stuff at people that are nearby. Uh-huh. Them. It, it is a really fun game and it controls really well and moves quick. Um, you know, so you don't feel like you're stuck in any one place for too long. Cool. Um, yeah, it's an awesome game. I think it's coming out of early access later this week. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe early next week. Um, so buy it quick before the price goes up, I guess. <laughs> Uh, there are probably only a couple days left uh, by the time this goes up. Uh, but that's been a really fun game. Um, but I'm kind of just like, you know, messing around with it because what I'm really waiting to do is play Yakuza 0, Ooh. which comes out here in the beginning of August. Nice. Uh, yeah, the first one of the Yakuza games to come out on the PC. Uh, the preview coverage has been looking good. Uh, it sounded like they did a good job porting it, which people were excited about. So it has decent PC options and runs well and all that sort of stuff. So I'm excited to go back to 80s Japan and punch some drunkards in the face and go <laughs> play Mahjong and then get money somehow. I don't know. I'm curious to hear what you think of that series because I hear about the Yakuza games all the time. And um, 
I want to hear from somebody that I know whether I should invest time or not. It seems extremely Japanese to the point where, like, you know, the Japanese opinions about women are all up in there. Uh There's a lot. Yeah, dude, it's there's that um, kind of, you know, there's you. One of the characters literally runs a hostess club. Uh Oh, Um, so, you know, that's in there. Um, But a lot of it is relegated to like side activities. So it's just like, hey, if you don't want to do this thing, there's a real estate mini game where you like become a real estate tycoon and okay up half the town i have to admit to something here uh fable 2 i think was the one where you could buy and sell property Hmm. maybe and like you could charge rent and stuff i don't know that this has that but Um, it definitely has the case of where you like buy buildings and they you know you earn money over time by owning x number of buildings or whatever okay because I definitely um, get stuck on those and will try to buy out the entire property in the game. Well, All you definitely it. can. You like, definitely can do that. Uh, and my understanding is that there's like evil real estate crime bosses that you can like. When you buy enough of their land, they get mad at you and like come try to beat you up, and then you got to got to beat them up. <laughs> that um, interests me. That's interesting. there. There's very silly stuff as well. Um, my understanding is there's a lot of the like fighting actions in the game are Uh like if you happen to be carrying an orange with you in your inventory you can like slam it in a dude's mouth and then like make him spew orange juice and very silly ways (laughs) to fight hit hit people with traffic cones and Uh all kinds of dumb stuff so uh, i'm looking forward to playing it we'll see uh this is the yakuza zero is a relatively recent game it's not like the newest one um but it is the earliest in the timeline so i guess that makes it a good place to start oh yeah yeah, I would. Cool. I don't know. Well, if uh, people have played the Yakuza games, where should they send advice, opinions, so that you can be pre- fully prepared when that comes out? Yeah, you can send those to podcast at wewerogamers.com. Uh, I will absolutely be interested in hearing about that, so please uh, send that stuff in. You can also hit us up on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram at we Were Gamers. Uh We are on all those places and would love to hear from you and hear your opinions. Uh, follow us on podcast softwares like Apple or Google and Stitcher and wherever else you get your fine podcasts like this one. Uh, we would love to hear from you folks uh, in whatever way you want to communicate with us. So, <laughs> Astral plane. Yeah, hey, please. Right if you on. know how to contact me on the astral plane, please, please do that. Speaking of which, uh, I already have two of the same planeswalker. Oh, yeah, which one? Uh, it's a blue one. Not Jace. Not Jace. Teferi? Ooh, what's not... It's a dude. Okay. Is he an African-American man? I... No, I don't think so. Okay. Then not Teferi. Okay. Uh, let's see. Not Jace. Uh... Mm. You know, I don't know the Blue Planeswalkers. I'm not gonna lie. Okay. I it's don't... not a Murloc, dude. I don't know. Oh, there's a Murloc? Or no, like Merfolk or whatever. Maybe they don't have a planeswalker. I don't know. It's one he makes like a, he makes some sort of helicopter thing. Makes a helicopter thing. Yeah, if you do oh, the. Oh, um, okay. Is it like uh, like it's like blue black or something, right? I don't know if it's a blue black card. Does he have like mechanical looking hands? Maybe. I don't know now. This is our outro. Magic is hard. Magic is hard. Anyway, what? Okay, as the outro, planeswalker cards are they worth playing at all? Yes, absolutely. They're extremely powerful. So I should just like build a deck around these guys. I can only uh, play it, one at a time, but I can have two in the deck or what? No, you can have uh, four copies in a deck. You can have as many planeswalkers out as you can play, but only I think you can't play multiple of the same one. Right, they just count as a legendary, right? Right. So if you have the same named card, you can't replace it. Or you can replace it, but you can't like have two of the same. What is the card. benefit of replacing a card that's already on the board? I guess I you could get rid of an enchantment on it, but yeah, or like start the effect over or something. Oh, good point. Yeah, if it has a different drop effect, right? Or like your planeswalker loyalty counters would reset. Uh oh, that's right. That whole system of like. So if you used the like minus ability on it, and then you times, didn't, you could just and then yeah, drop it down, and then you get five more. Tokens. And essentially the way the planeswalkers work is uh if you get the big minus ability off you basically win the game for most of them. Really? 
generally they're powerful enough that if you play it and it resolves, you win. What are helicopters or, called in that game? Thopter? Yeah. That's a that's a helicopter thing. I think they're called Thopters or something. Mm-hmm. I'll have to look it up. Anyway. Uh, okay. So I got to read his... I got to start playing blue decks. I mean, you don't have to, but <laughs> it's definitely possible to play without them, um, but they are usually quite good. At the level you're at, is it only Planeswalkers? Uh, I mean, most decks probably have one or two in there, um, but it's not like it's required. Yeah.